Online Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey now, hey now, don't you? Sing it, Jason. Hey now. That's the only part That's I know. Part of house. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the After Buzz TV Awkward After Show, Season 5, Episode 6. Don't dream. This is a real it's struggle over. already, huh? <laughs> I always want to say After Buzz and Awkward opposite each other. Anyways, I'm Tiana Hobson. I'll be your host tonight. And joining me tonight, I have. Jason Eichler. No introduction? Nope, that's it. Okay, well, thank you for having me. Thanks for being here since if you Christina guys want, bailed on yeah, us tonight. Christina's gone. Um, we don't want to go out and say this since it is on the internet, but Schmorshen. I mean, he is, said it. I mean, I didn't say anything. I sneezed. <laughs> I'm not Anyways, confirming support, or denying this. We support you because of women's rights. She had to go before Planned Parenthood was completely shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyways, we're not here to talk about Christina and what may or may Thank not be developing God. in her stomach. <laughs> we are here to talk about awkward, and we've got a lot of awkwardness to talk about. Um, we're going to start with our Sex in the City theme of the night. Okay, at first when they did this, I was like, is this going to be another corny episode? But I actually kind of loved it. <laughs> Took me about five extra minutes to figure out what the dream <laughs> I know. was about. You're like, oh, is, are they being Sex in the City <laughs> characters? Yes, correct. Well, I just couldn't figure out why Tamara was in that, like, pantsuit in the dream sequence. and so Miranda. That, yeah, well, I wasn't putting it together that, you know, it starts with Jenna and Tamara in her bed trying to watch season yeah. four of Sex in the City. Turns out um, her parents have sex in the titties. Okay, two questions. One, have you ever found anything sexual of your parents? No, never. Thank God. I haven't either. They're good at hiding it if they're into that thing. My parents don't have sex. I hope. <laughs> Two, have you ever watched porn with a with a lover? Not with a lover, no. Have you? I think I did once in college. Oh, okay. It was, it was okay. It was fine. Um, okay, anyways, Sex in the City. I just thought you were going to have a more interesting story oh, than no, that. No, I Nothing. mean, I've watched porn, just not with anyone else. Oh. Actually, I lied. I watched um, Pirates of the Caribouty with a group of friends. <laughs> we we were a little intoxicated, and we decided to put it in on a laptop and have a good laugh. And Actually, I think with my old roommate, R.I.P., um, <laughs> I, I watched a porno with her, too. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun to just laugh at that stuff yeah. with someone else. Like, sex it doesn't have can to be... be funny, kids. Yeah, sex can be funny. So I actually thought Sadie as Samantha. I was so excited they did that <laughs> because she's kind of always reminded me of Samantha. Yes. It was actually perfect, and it's one of those things but that... But I don't think Tamara would have actually been Miranda. I think in real life, Tamara is Charlotte because I've always thought Tamara was the like high school version, version of Charlotte. I don't know about that. I think Jenna is Miranda. That is true. And I don't think we Actually, have a Carrie. Actually, I think Carrie. the... Oh, see, I was going to say I think Tomorrow's more of the Carrie. But don't you think Tomorrow's a little too, like, duh, 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 like, just reminds me of, who are you? Oh, I was always a Charlotte. A Charlotte? Yeah. I'm a Charlotte. That's what they told me in college, so... Really? I would picture you to be a Samantha. Nope, because I'm not actually promiscuous. Oh, I forgot. You I just think out. I am. <laughs> who are you? Um... I always thought I was a Carrie and Samantha. I, I think you're a Samantha. But um, who's who's the one that... What's the other one? We're forgetting her name. Carrie, Samantha, Charlotte. Miranda. Miranda. We talked about. Um, oh, wait. You're a Miranda. You're not a... Charlotte's like the goody-goody. Yeah, I'm a Charlotte. My boyfriend thinks I'm a Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think your boyfriend thinks you're a Charlotte. No, he told me that. I think because I'm a little crazy. Anyways. Anyways. Irrelevant. So we have Sadie as Samantha, Tamara as Miranda, and Lissa as Charlotte, which I think is actually a great. Yeah, I guess she's a super Christian girl. And I, 
one of the things I liked about this was that it's something that just kind of happened naturally because we've had these characters on the show now for five seasons and then it's like oh now we're actually placing them as sex in the city characters and it just worked out so perfectly i'm actually surprised have we talked about this on the show sex in the city yeah no because i'm surprised that hasn't come up yeah i never really put the correlation together but it kind of does work it kind of does work i mean minus (laughs) minus but basically what we've learned from this is that jenna is a crazy ex-girlfriend yeah she is kind of crazy and you know what who else is crazy tamara Oh, both crazy both ex-girlfriends. Both are crazy ex-girlfriends. You know who else is a crazy ex-girlfriend? You. <laughs> I'm just a crazy girlfriend. There's no ex involved. Um, Rebecca Bunch. I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she's a character on a new CW show that comes to the theater in your home, comes to your home television. On, when is this? Monday, October 28th. 12th. Or September 28th. Nope, this is wrong. It comes Monday, October 12th. I don't know who wrote this little script up. Eh, wrong. Monday, October 12th at 8, 7 central, but I'm actually super excited for this show because it's a musical. It is. And they it's... sing, and it's about a crazy ex-girlfriend who follows a guy around because she thinks she found love. And I watched the trailer, and she really is crazy. Like, she does some crazy things, and I saw her dropping some pills down the sink, so that's when you know you're crazy. If you're on pills, <laughs> and then you put them down the drain, who we knows su- what's going to happen? We support mental health here, but I will say there's a scene from the trailer that I watched where she, like, texts a guy, and then she keeps looking at her phone, and then falls asleep <laughs> and wakes up and looks at her phone, and then is, like, looking at her phone. Who does that remind you of, Jason? Nobody I know, but I'm just saying, like, I think (laughs) that's a very relatable thing to happen. Oh, you don't think it sounds just like you texting someone? Except instead of falling asleep, it'd be like, hey, why aren't you answering? Where are you? I just think... What are you doing? I just think it takes five seconds to text somebody back. But what if that person isn't looking at their phone? Not all of us have it glued to our hand like you. Do you know, this is totally irrelevant, I used to have the red receipts on and I didn't realize I had the red (laughs) receipts on. So I would always try to be like sly when a guy is texting me. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, he can totally see that I read it. And then waited three minutes to respond. Not a good look. Nope. Not. But make sure you guys check out Crazy Ex-Girlfriend on the CW. October 12th at 8, 7 central. <laughs> I don't know what this 928 business is. <laughs> All right. So back to our episode. Um, so in the dream sequence is basically a ghost of boyfriend's past type of deal and we get to see all of our favorites we and we see... have to say jenna has had some good conquests yeah we have luke owen colin colin and maddie i'm so happy and colin's Jake. finally back i just wish he would have had a shirt off i mean they definitely could have had him i think all, when they were all in bed together they should have all been naked just for the viewers at home. <laughs> where are you going with this just um, a suggestion hmm. So Jenna's trying to figure out if she's still into Maddie, which, duh, you are. Um, And so she kind of goes to each boyfriend, and she talks to Jake while she's still awake because Jake came by. And Jake basically tells her, um, you know, you weren't fully truthful with me in our relationship, and you caused a lot of drama in our relationship, which, both very true facts. And then she talks to Luke, and Luke says that he drove all the way up to her spring break in the mountains, and she couldn't resist going after the drama with Maddie because it kind of led her back to Maddie. I thought that one was really interesting because at first I was kind of like, no, she has a good point, but if you're committed in a relationship, like, that has to come first. Yeah. And Maddie was her ex at the time, so, Mm -hmm. like, you gotta let it go. I mean, he was locked up with a crazy girl who might have tried to kill him. But also Sadie knew, somebody else knew, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't... It, It All of it didn't lie on her. Jenna feels that everything that's happening with Maddie's life, she's the only person who can fix it. And that's not true. Um, And Luke also tells her that you always kind of had one foot out the door with us. You never gave us a real shot. And then you have Owen, who's the sophomore musician boy whose virginity she took. I forgot about him. And he's so adorable in, like, the little boy, like, sweet kind of way. And he says that she never listened to him. I feel like this is me and Jason. He never listens to me. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I never listen to you because just like you just rambled on for seven <laughs> minutes, sometimes it's hard to get a word in edgewise, so you just have to go over lists and things in your head. Oh. Also, I think the problem with Jenna is that she, her entire high school career, has tried to avoid being a, a cliche. And I think going back to your high school boyfriend and always being in love with him is super cliche. 
And I think she realizes that. And that's why I think subconsciously she doesn't want to go back to Maddie. And that's why she's probably convinced herself that she doesn't want to go back to Maddie when Maddie is, in fact, the one for her. But she doesn't believe... No, she believes in just the one. But did she... Didn't she say we have more than... Do you believe in the one? I think that there is the one. But then if something were to tragically happen to that one, then there's another. (laughs) (laughs) I think I believe in the one, too. But I think it's like you have to just make it... Like, I think... I think Jenna's on a pursuit of perfection. And no relationship is ever going to be perfect. So she has to learn that... Just because it's not perfect doesn't mean that it's not right. And that if you put in some work, you can make it happen. And you have to take the good with the bad. Because unless you're dating Tiana or I, there's no such thing as a perfect person. It's true. Mary Poppins told me I was perfect. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Um, But did you agree with Owen? Because he said, he also mentioned that the whole relationship, everything that happened, she made it about him or about herself when it was his virginity that got taken. She kissed him because she thought Maddie was kissing someone else. I actually else. felt of all those guys there, Owen kind of didn't belong. Like, I know I know she hurt him, and in his perspective, he was the one that, like, she took his virginity, blah, blah, blah. But I don't think she ever saw Owen. I think she would admit she never gave Owen a chance because she just saw Owen as a distraction. Yeah. She didn't try to pursue... All the other guys there, she tried to pursue a relationship with. Yeah. Um, speaking of the other guys there, Colin who is... Oh. I turned to Jason halfway through watching the episode, and I go, oh, I hope Colin comes back. <laughs> and there he was. And there he was, looking beautiful as ever. Still crazy. Okay, if you're listening to the Writers of Awkward, we need more Colin sex scenes in this final, potentially not final season, and I think the ratings would skyrocket. That's all. That's all. That's Jason's PSA for the day. Thank you. Um, but Colin... Colin's conversation was interesting because it was mostly them taking jabs at each other that only proved that there's still sexual tension. Yeah. And well, because I think I, I think there are some people in your life that you're good for. There are some people that, like, maybe you're mentally good for, and then there's some people that you're sexually good for, and then there's just some people that, like, everything works together. Her and Colin probably have a really hot sex. And it's probably not like, I love you and I want to cuddle sex. It's like, it's like I want to slap, slap you, you against you. Yeah. Over, smack your ass. Yeah. <laughs> anyways. Anyways, as we were saying, if you're interested in laying Tiana, please leave your personal information in the comments below because clearly she could use some. Um, so the main She's thing... She's not even denying it. <laughs> the main thing that Colin says to Jenna is that she liked him because he's not Maddie, which I thought was kind of important. I think that is true because I think her biggest problem with Maddie is that Maddie wasn't intellectual and didn't intellectually stimulate her. Mm -hmm. I mean, that (laughs) non-sexual way. (laughs) Even though you said stimulate, Stimulate. very sexual. But you know what I mean? Like, at that time in her life, she wanted somebody that she could have a conversation about literature and art with, and then in comes Colin, who happens to be super hot. That's true. I like that. And then she finishes up with Maddie showing up on her bed and being like, I want to be with you. And then, she, yeah, and then she freaks out and runs away. And then that's when we have the scene when they're all sitting on the bed. Mm-hmm. And this is the part where I turn to Jason and I go, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I just had an epiphany, epiphany that all the guys each have, like, one of the traits that all together add up to being Maddie. And so I broke it down. But then Jason told me it didn't really sound that smart. Um, <laughs> but Jake is an athlete just like Maddie is an athlete. Luke is intellectual, and she can have those conversations with, which Maddie sometimes can get on board with her intellectual level, depending on the subject matter. Um, Colin is hot, like Maddie. And then Owen, I couldn't quite place Owen, but I the only thing I could come up with Owen, because he's younger, is that he's immature, like Maddie tends to be sometimes as well. So you take each of those traits, and one plus one plus one equals Maddie. But that's not where they went with that. They basically were like, look, you broke up with me because you wanted to be with Maddie. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a little bit better. <laughs> I thought that I was reading way into it. Was it a, and it like, was a sweet thought. Thanks. You're being condescending. So basically, Jenna realizes that, yes, I want to be with Maddie, which we knew 30 minutes ago. So thanks, Jenna. Thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for waking up. And then meanwhile, we have Tamara and Gabby down at the base because Tamara has decided that she has to go back 
to get Adam because Adam is her Mr. Big. And she doesn't want to wait seven more seasons before she finally gets her man. She wants to go after him right now. Is this romantic or psychotic? I think... Or is it Crazy X? Because at this point, they're kind of... I don't think it's Crazy X. I think... I think all the time she called on the way there maybe is a little crazy. <laughs> she sent, but like, like, 33 voicemails and... But sometimes if somebody doesn't answer, <laughs> you just gotta keep calling until they answer. There's nothing wrong with that. 33 times there's something um, wrong. I think it's... I don't know. I actually I actually didn't think it was that crazy because they were just engaged and I think it was actually kind of sweet that she stayed the night so she could be like wait and be honest with him. I think when he came out the first time, had she had the original apology, things would have gone a little bit better. But then it was like you broke up with me. Now you can't even take faults. So the third time he's already like he went to bed pissed after that. So then he wakes up the next morning and sees her. But I thought it, I thought she was sincere during the morning. Yeah. And I think she should have said, I think she should have said something along the lines of like, I love you and I want to be with you, but I'm only 17. I'm not ready to be married, but I want to be, you know, I just want to be your girlfriend. Yeah. And I think that could have been a little different. Did she ever say the words, I'm sorry? Yeah. She said, I, I hurt you and I'm sorry. Okay. Right. The, the my, next thing. Yeah. Because my thing was, I felt she should have opened with, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because she had that great conversation, which I was so happy that Gabby was there with her. So, because Gabby kind of is a better voice of reason than yeah. Jenna, and so Gabby saying after the first meeting, "You never said you're sorry," and that's pretty much what he wants to hear. And then the second opening, she opened up not with an excuse again, but it felt like I'm going to tell you why I did what I did, and yeah. then get to the apology instead of being like, "I'm sorry." This is what was going through my yeah. mind, and it's like sometimes you need to open with the "I'm sorry." Yeah. Just and then maybe explain yourself, but not say like I'm this person. But not blah, as, blah 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 yeah. blah. Like, I'm sorry. Excuse. Like I shouldn't have gotten engaged with you. I love you, and I told Jenna. But then the more we planned things, the more I realized I really loved you. I still don't want to be engaged, but I want to be with you. Yeah. Bag. They could have been together. Boom. Um. But she gave him back his grandma's ring. She should have kept it. She should not have kept it. No. We ha- no. Because then she has another reason to see him. I mean, she knows where he lives and can just camp out. But outside then, no, I mean, <laughs> of the base. That's crazy ex girlfriend. <laughs> that's what she did that I'm night. I'm just saying. Sometimes you have to do things to just like, ooh, we ran into each other. Oh my god. But if it's like, hey, like, can we? I I know we're done, but do you want to come get your grandma's ring? And then you just have sex, and it's like, bada bing, bada boom, bada bang, bada bang, bang bang. Um, yeah. So I mean. Right now, it seems like they're done, but I don't think that their story is over yet because T has serious feelings for Adam. Yeah. And I don't think that that's going to be done, but I, I kind of... At the same time, can't you see her, like, waking up next episode and being like, what was I thinking? I've got to get back on track for college. Home yeah. Tomorrow. Or waking up in bed with Gabby and Jake and having just had a threesome in some <laughs> Have you ever had a motel, threesome? Motel room. No, I haven't. Have Shut you? Up. No. You've never, got, like, gone home with a football team or anything? Like <laughs> no. Okay. I don't think that's a threesome, by the way. There's way more than three people on a football team. I don't know. Just I don't watch so football. so you know. Um, and then we just have Jake and Gabby, who didn't have that much in tonight's episode, but... I did think it was a little strange that Tamara and Gabby were talking about Jake. Because I would have been, been insanely jealous to talk to, like, his... If I was... Jake's girlfriend to talk I, to the I ex. think it was the perfect compliment coming off of last week's episode with Gabby having to be drunk to deal with being around all of Jake's exes. Oh, good point. So then now you see her sobering up and she's stuck with one of the girlfriends and they have a kind of bonding moment of like, oh gosh, he still has to get those eight hours. Yeah. Like, that's ridiculous. And then kind of find the common ground because then you have Jake being the first one to T after she's having her emotional breakdown. That's when I would have been really jealous. Yeah, that's when I was like, oh, crap. Yeah. Gabby, going, we're going to cut to Gabby and she's going to be all pissed off. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. But luckily she was just, she came in for the group hug too. So I would like to see Gabby and Tamara be friends. I think they would be cute friends. Yeah, I think they would be so. a good little friendship circle there. For sure. For sure. For sure, Z's. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No. All right, then let's talk about our predictions for next week. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, so I used to think Jenna and Maddie were going to get back together right away, but I think it's too obvious. 
So something's gonna happen. Jenna, okay. I was gonna say, Jenna and Maddie aren't getting back together until the winter finale. I agree. So either he's gonna see an ex or she's gonna, something's gonna happen with an ex, Mm -hmm. I think. It seems like next week they're trying to plot it out to where everyone's discouraging Jenna to tell Maddie her feelings. So then in that discouragement, he'll have time to meet someone. Oh, she's going to get the boss to tell him. Yeah, but it's going to be... She's going to see him with whoever. Mm Mm-hmm. Good point. The next Eva. Forever Eva. Forever Eva. Um, Do you have any other predictions? No, I just have one. Oh, I only have one per show. You You can't ask any more of me. I can. No. If I wanted to. All right, guys. Well, make sure you let us know what your predictions are for next week and for the rest of the season on Awkward. Jason, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Jason Eichler. And you can find me at the Tiana Hobson. Jason's throwing things at me right now like a three-year-old. Um, at the Tiana, Tiana Hobson. <laughs> make sure you check out all of AfterBuzz TV's after shows at AfterBuzzTV.com and on social media at AfterBuzzTV. Um, And yeah, we will see you guys next week. Bye! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. You're welcome. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 